Can everybody hear me okay? This is Charles from RiskDoctor.com. Yep, we can hear you fine over here. Oh, great. Oh, great. Okay, so um, I just want to pop this up. We're going to be talking about broken wings today. I'm going to feature my presentation, the saga, as I call it, is um, about a Google trade. And it, everything worked out very, very well. But I'm also going to show what happens when it goes wrong. And some people have sent me some uh, questions that I will feature at the last page of the PDF, which I think you got the link to. It's bwb.zip that's available, link there. 67 pages is kind of big, so help yourself to that. And um, without further ado, let's get going. Um, this, uh, by the way, is Diamonetrix. It's a, a software package that I use to overlay anything. So if I had a picture of your mom, she'd be Diamonetric Gridized right in here. So uh, it's got a lot of cool features. And um, you're going to see mostly the results of it all. So I will show that later. But we won't do that right now. So I'm going to close this thing down. And so uh, let's go right to the first page here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. But Hopefully you've downloaded it and you can see it at your end. But we're going to cover a lot of these. Um, I'll just close off the menu too. We're going to first talk about uh, placement of strikes. You know, how do I how do I do that? I use Diamonetrics. It's a technical analysis program. So for broken wings, I don't just arbitrarily do them personally. I find a reason to do them. I try and find a likely expiration range to bet on. And I also try to um, try to find where there's support and resistance. And on the top side, above resistance, I look to sell a vertical spread to, to, and in greater quantity, usually to pay for those butterflies. And if there's support in the market, I like to sell a put vertical out of the money uh, below support and uh, to generate the credit that I'm going to need to pay for either completely or, or mostly or um, and sometimes greater than I get a bigger credit than what I'm buying. So I, I can put it on for credit. But the credit or the debit isn't really the criteria. It just helps matters. And then as the market unfolds, I use um, a program called Risk Illustrator to identify components, butterflies, verticals, condors, different elements that are blossoming or uh, that I can harvest and take profits on that are embedded in the position. We'll talk about that, but also to um, you know, manage my risk and say, oh gosh, you know, I really want to buy back some of that uh, short vertical, whether it's the short call spread or the short put spread, and how can I pay for that? Can I can I sell something off to pay for it? You know, sort of make a compromise with my, my position to sell off something that maybe I think won't see the daylight that it needs in order to blossom those baby butterflies that are embedded in there, and and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about more. And um, so, you know, there's going to be rolling, and there's examples in here. There are 20 trades that were made during April 29th to June 18th during the saga. And um, the saga starts on page 10 and goes till page 53, so there's a lot of imagery we're going to look at. I'm going to talk about the butterfly arcs, the pricing arcs. Uh, from pages 54 to 63, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, and those uh, show you how the butterflies are sort of blossoming over time or contracting because of increases in, in implied volatility. And that happened during this, this trade. Uh, you should know that if I put on the trade and never touched it and, and came back a day of expiration and took it off, this trade would have made a, a ton of money. It would have made um, basically a hundred percent return, but I got in the way of it because I was managing the risk and taking 
profits and reducing my risk over time. And so I only uh, got a little over 50% return on this. So and that's the, the reality of options. You, don't, you can't ride it all the way to the end. The only way you can ride it, uh, any butterfly to the end, is if it's nearly worthless and, it, and it's not worth selling and then all of a sudden, boom, it gaps to your mid-strike. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's, let's start, uh, let's see what's going on. So I did uh, several uh, diamondetric grids with symmetry between uptrends and downtrends. I prefer using logarithmic charts. You can tell that these are log charts because the distance of 20 points on the lower end here between 380 and 400 is wider than from 720 to 740 at the top. Um, this is a one-year log chart. I mostly prefer two-year log charts, and I, I will show you uh, a two-year log chart here. And I also got some five-year log charts, and I also did some tilting and stuff. So let, we'll, we'll see them each time, each one. So these three dots, by the way, this big dot, little dot, and uh, here, represents the, the position that I actually put on. So this highest dot here is the 530 strike, because I bought, based on my projections, the 450, 490, 530 butterflies. They were going for 9 bucks, And I sold three times as many 30 of the 550, 560 call spreads, the verticals that showed showing where the vertical is sitting out of the money and above resistance for $3. So I did this trade for even money, what we say on the floor, or zero, zero cost. And uh, this was starting April 29th and uh, targeting June expiration. This particular chart is targeting between 445 and 520. So call this chart uh, a vote. You know, this is what this chart is suggesting to do. Now we're going to go to another chart, and the dots are going to be represented by 450, 490, 530, and the vertical will be properly aligned at the 550 strike because it's short the 550, 560 credit spread. So, but you can see the proximity to the actual two-year than the variations of the five-year charts that I have as well. All right, so let's go to this second page here. Let's uh, just go like this for, all right. Now this is the two-year log chart and it's targeting a wedge, these thicker lines, transparent lines, I call wick zones. And it's, um, I placed the, at expiration, Thinkorswim has the expiration dates nicely embedded in their charts. And you can see the June expiration, I say it's going to have a bottom here of 450-ish to 530-ish. That's what the butterfly is, okay? So it's like perfectly in line with the downsloping wick zone and the upsloping wick zone. And you can see that I'm placing my vertical that doesn't have to be adjacent. Most broken wings that are textbook broken wings are have the short strike adjacent with the vertical to the, the body strike. It doesn't have to be that way. You can place it anywhere. And so my trading is a little bit more conscious of support and resistance. And so I like to place them out of danger. And only if the price is good. I mean, I won't just sell any vertical. If that vertical is 70 cents, I wouldn't sell like 200 of them, you know, be, to make up the money. I w I'm, I'm always, you know, processing value and making sure that, you know, what I'm buying is can be paid for and what I am selling is, uh, you know, got some meat to it. 